to him now. Come on, let's take it to him. Bill Parcells. He said Dave Robinson was a Lawrence Taylor before there was a Lawrence Taylor. My dad's style of play was pretty much the original. Big, strong, fast linebacker. The person who had the ball knew Dave Robinson was on the field that day. Tear somebody's head off. How's that? Play some football. His whole goal was, that's their ball. Why do you have my ball? We want it back. Defense isn't to stop the team. Defense is to get the ball and score. And God help those that are going to stop us from doing what we're supposed to do. Him being on the left side is a natural fit for him. Most teams back in the 60s, they ran everything to the right side. So he loved being in the action and everything came towards him. He loved being in the right place at the right time. Timing wasn't always in Robinson's control. Before entering the NFL, he was an All-American at Penn State in the early 60s when racial tensions ran high. He was the first black player to integrate the Gator Bowl. He was like 19 or 20 at the time. And uh, he got many death threats. The Gator Bowl people said he couldn't stay in a hotel. Well, one of the coaches at Penn State said, yes, he has to. They said he couldn't eat in the dining hall. So my dad had to go and eat in his room. And some of the coaches at Penn State, they came up and ate in the room with him. My dad, he picked a heck of a game. He had interception, touchdown, uh, tackles, and they're afraid to let him be, get MVP because the first black player there, they went to the Gator Bowl the next year. And he didn't have a good game as the first year, but they named him MVP. Robinson's performance impressed the Packers enough to select him in the first round of the 1963 draft. And it wasn't long before he became a crucial part of Vince Lombardi's defense. Down he goes, wrestled down by big number 89, Dave Robinson. Vince made sure that team was a well-oiled machine. Everybody knew the role, everybody knew the position. He did his role with that well-oiled machine, and they were tough. That defense was something to be marveled. He was always in the picture where the ball was. I just thought maybe he was a camera hound or something. But then as I got older, watching the games, that was his job. He, wherever the ball was, that was his job to get there. He was performing some big games. I guess he didn't want to be the one like uh, on the team that didn't do the job. In the big game against Dallas, he wasn't supposed to go off the quarterback. He was supposed to fall into the flats, dropping the coverage. But he saw Bob Hayes trying to block him. That's why he had that gap between the guard and the center and took off. Meredith takes the ball, rolls out to the right. He's going to be nailed. Intercepted. A pass away and it's intercepted in the end zone. Dave Robinson nailed Don Meredith as he attempted to throw that pass. It was intercepted in the end zone by Tom Brown. And the Packers have just taken the championship. The Packers went on to win Super Bowl I and repeated as champions the following year. In his career, Robinson tallied 27 interceptions and retired in 1974 as a three-time Pro Bowler and a member of the 1960s All-Decade Team. I always knew the Hall was missing one person. The moment when he got the announcement was uh, a sign of relief. My dad's a great Hall of Fame football player. My mom was a great Hall of Fame mother. And that's the part that's missing from all this, because without her, it's not him. And I guarantee he would not be in the Hall of Fame without Elaine Robinson. Dad, I know this is a long time coming. I know Mom, Rich, and Rob couldn't be here. I'm sure they're here with us right now, as well as your father and your mother, Nana, your brothers, your sisters, everybody that helped you get to this point. I'm honored to be here to present you into the enshrinement of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You've always been a Hall of Fame father to me. I'm really honored and proud that they finally got it right. Congratulations. Be proud, because we're definitely proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Dave Robinson for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, David Robinson. Canton, Ohio, how you doing? I love this place. Before I get started, though, I have just a little bit of housekeeping to do. I like this. First of all, before I forget, I want to say that today I have two fellows who are good friends of mine, Buddy and Billy Lamb. It's their birthday, and I want to say happy birthday to them. Yeah. I also have a niece. I have a niece, Henrietta Hill. Today is also her birthday. I want to say happy birthday. And my granddaughter. Take this, my granddaughter is 18 today. Hey, Michelle, happy birthday. 
You know, I, I say that because I'd be greatly amiss if I didn't, if I forgot their birthdays. This is a great day in their life, but for me, this is the biggest day ever. This is the biggest day of the 21st century for the Robinson family, and I want to thank all of you for it. Yeah. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame, first of all, for being here uh, for the last 50 years and doing a job making this the premier sports venue in the country. I'd like to thank the Board of Directors of the Hall of Fame for letting me serve on the board for 27 years. It's a great board. I'd most of all like to thank the selectors, in particular, the senior committee who uh, looked back and said, well, wait a minute, we missed Dave Robinson. Let's put him in there. Fellas, I really thank you. Yeah. I have friends, families, and fans, and everybody else, and I live just about 25 miles from here. But you know what? It took me 38 years to get here. And I tell you, and I enjoyed every step of the way. Yeah. I started out as a, as a country boy in South Jersey, farmer. <laughs> I, I, was, I was raised on a farm in South Jersey, and uh, I was one of nine children to Mary and Leslie Robinson, who both passed away. Of those nine children, eight of them are gone, well, seven are gone, excuse me. The only one's left for myself and my sister Henrietta Robinson is sitting out there. She's been a big stalwart for me. She stayed with me. I, can, I still remember Henrietta bought me my very first store-bought suit. Everything else I had before that were hand-me-downs, but she did it for me, so I owe her a lot. I know the other seven siblings, my mother and father, they're all looking down on me now saying, where to go, Dave, I hope. Yeah. I was reared in Mount Law. I went to school in a little town called Morristown, New Jersey. Great town. <laughs> I had an excellent coach in Coach George Masters and his coaching staff, one of the finest coaching staffs I've ever been around. And uh, unfortunately for them, or unfortunately for me, they've all passed. The only one left is Coach Dick Loring, and he's here somewhere. And Coach, I, I want to say thank you, Coach, for all the things you've done and continue to do for me. You know, all are gone, like I said, and I know these coaches all looking down on me. Coach Mass is the finest high school coach I've ever seen, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that. They did one big thing. They directed me towards Penn State, the Pennsylvania State University. One of the biggest things of my life. Um, I, I bet there I met the legendary Joe Paterno and Rip Engel, and they they taught they taught me a lot about football. They took a rough, they took a diamond in the rough and made me a football player. And for them, I thank them. However, both both Rip and Joe, J.T. White, Jim O'Hara, Trevor Torretti, all those coaches, the whole staff has passed on. But I hope they're looking down on me now, and I want to say to them, thank you very much. While well, at Penn State, my, my romance blossomed with a young lady I met in high school named Elaine Burns, and as she uh, later on became my wife. We dated for about one and, a half to, to, about one and a half years in high school and four years in college, approximately six years, and then we were married for 44, so as David mentioned, she was a great woman, I, and I miss her, miss her a lot. <clears throat> but while at Penn State, <laughs> thank you. While at Penn State had some great, had some great teammates and whatnot, including our, we had a kicker, Sam Stellatello, just a great guy. You know, I've been blessed with great football players all my life to be around. Football is a team sport, and I've had great teams around me. The aforementioned Morristown High School team was the only defeated team in 1957. The first one in school history, and a lot of those, I got about 10 of those members here today, too. We are like brothers, and they're here to support me, and I thank them very much. Uh, I tell you, football, football is a game that's, that's meant to be played. My former coach said it's a Spartan game, played by Spartan-like individuals in a Spartan-like manner. It's a game of hitting and getting hit. You gotta like to hit and you gotta like to get hit. Because if you don't, you won't last long in this league. Uh, I tell people that when you play football, you gotta like to taste the blood. And you gotta remember that 50% of the time is your blood. So, <laughs> I tell you, I came to Green Bay in 1963. What's so unusual about that is it was 50 years ago. 
Same year as the Hall of Fame. It's their anniversary, it's my 50th anniversary of, of my alliance to the National Football League. I feel the NFL is the greatest sport, sports entity in the world, and nothing touches the top of the NFL. I'll tell you, <clears throat> i tell you, all those coaches I had at Green Bay, they've all gone on to Vince Lombardi, a head coach, Phil Banks, my defense coordinator, Hog Hanner, a line coach, defense line coach, a Norb Hecker, and Ray Cochran. They're all passed. But I think, I hope, they're looking down on me. I hope they are. I thank them very, very much for that. I also, I was also privileged to play for another great coach, and George Allen. I went to watch the Redskins. And he, George was. Yeah. Everybody knows that George, George he's one of the great. George is here in the Hall of Fame also, as is Vince Lombardi, and well deserved. The one thing, the one thing I say about George is that that's really bad is that George has passed away also, and I hope he's looking down on me. I, I, I don't know if you caught it, but there's been a lot of coaches in my life, and a lot of them have left here, and so uh, I don't think anybody, anybody else wants to coach Dave Robinson. <laughs> you know, last of all. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people looking down up there, my family and friends, and, and some of my friends may be looking up at me. <laughs> but, but, but I, I just hope they're all proud of me, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, unlike a lot of people, I never dreamt in high school of coming to the Hall of Fame. Never crossed my mind. When I went through college, was trying to make blocks, what I had to go up against my sophomore year, when I was just a young sophomore learning things, had to go up against Mike Dick, scared to death, by the way. I never dreamt that someday be in the Hall of Fame. Didn't even think about the Hall of Fame. And some people say, well, didn't you even have dreams about it? I said, no. There was no Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame, <laughs> Hall of Fame wasn't created until my rookie year. <laughs> And, and I tell you, and Vince Lombardi thought that the Hall of Fame was the greatest thing that ever happened to football. And you know what? As his disciple, I say, he's right. It was. I played on the left side of Lombardi's line. And as Ford mentioned, we had 12 guys, counting Jim Ringo. He wasn't on our championship teams that run of, of, the, of the three in a row, but he was there for the first couple. But as, beside me was Willie Davis and Herb Arley, and next to them was Ray Nischke, and behind me sometimes was Willie Wood, it was possible that you could line up in the wrong formation and there'd be five, five Hall of Famers all on the left side all at one time. Credence for the fact this may be the strongest left side in the history of the National Football League. <laughs> Argument, yeah. And then, and just to keep it, just to keep it even, we got, we got uh, four Hall of Famers on the offense, but I won't go into all that. <laughs> yeah, the whole backfield and Forrest Gregg, and Jim Ringo, I just said it's five, I can't count. Them. I'll tell you, the Green Bay Packer organization is one of the greatest in the world. Everybody in the Green Bay Packer organization is dedicated to football. They want nothing but the best football. They want nothing but the best from their ball players. And they want to give the fans the best football possible. From kickers like, like uh, um, Jan Stenrud, he is up here, to Chris Jackie. People like Curly Lambeau, that started the Green Bay Packers. And, Mark Murphy, who now runs the Green Bay Packers, he has a great Packer organization. It's, to me, it's one of the finest football organizations in the country, and I'd like to tell all the people in Packerland, thank you for putting me where I am. Without them, I couldn't be here. You know, I... <laughs> I just want to touch on, on something my son said about his mother being a Hall of Famer. She was. You have to understand that she... Uh, we were married in 1963. 1964, I told her, I said, baby, I wouldn't come to Green Bay. There are no black wives in Green Bay at all. And she said, wherever my husband goes, I'm going too. So we packed up his day's twin brother, Elaine and I, and we drove across country from New Jersey to Green Bay. And I dropped her at Green Bay in a little house we had rented. And I went to training camp. She was uh, just 22 years old, didn't have any siblings, didn't have anybody taking care of children. She had twins, 10 months old, didn't know where the drugstore was, the grocery store, the laundromat, or even the diaper service. And, and I was only allowed to come home between 9.30 and 10. But even with that, 
She helped the family together. She reared those children well, and she uh, even put up with my craziness when I come home. So uh, I tell you, if anybody's going to be a Hall of Famer, I think she was it. She earned it the hard way. I remember, I remember what she said one time, she went, talked to Mrs. Lombardi and said, Marie said, Marie told me, she said, uh, my only problem here is that Dave gets hollered at on the field, he comes home and he hollers at us. And I said, look, you tell Dave, Vince only hollers at people with potential. When he stops hollering, you're on your way out of here. So, <laughs> starting the next day, he hollered, I said, he loves me. <laughs> he really likes me a lot. <laughs> But I, I, I hung in there, and it's great. I tell you, I might, while I'm talking, I might say one thing else. She often said that she would not have made it those first couple years being alone in Green Bay. There were rumors that there was one black lady lived in town, one in the whole city, and uh, I never met her. So, but, but they, the rumors were she was there. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, th you think what I thought? She's probably passing. But, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, she. But what? Elijah Pitts' wife, Ruth came to town with her son, uh, who, Ronnie, who's on TV now, I won't mention the network, it's not this one, and, uh, <laughs> or this one. Anyway, he, uh, the two of them came in, and so Elena and Ruth, they were, the, they were the pillars that we stuck to. And after that, more and more black wires came to Green Bay. There we go now, it's a very, very integrated city. It never was, it never was a city of bias, just a city of lack of color, that's all. But, uh, I, uh, I, I told myself I wasn't going to speak too long, and I'm going to get up, get up here real quick. I'd like to say, first of all, that uh, the fans of, of Baltimore, you guys may be great, but you got to come to Lambeau Field to see the real thrill of a real fanship. Lambeau's the place. A lot of guys don't want to believe me, but you know what, I'll tell you what, our fans are as enthusiastic as any other fans in the country. Our fans own the team. Now top that. <laughs> you want to talk that? Our fan, I'll tell you what, I've affiliated with, with almost all the 32 owners. And the best owner in the league is the Green Bay Packers, the fans of Green Bay. And I love those guys. But I, uh, I'm here now, and they, won't, no, they can't get me out. I, I finally made it, and I'm here forever. <laughs> the one thing, one thing I've always said, and you may have heard me quote it this, the thing about the Hall of Fame is the closest thing a football player can get to immortality. You are forever immortalized in the bus, in that place. I look at that bus and it touches me because I know the eons are now. Some little Robinson, some great, 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 great of mine will come in and look up and say, I wonder if, that's really, if that Robinson related to us. And the answer is going to be, yes, sir, he is. And I'll be looking down on him. You're immortalized right there in the Hall of Fame. For this, I'd like to thank everybody here and the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. That was phenomenal. His friends are looking up at him. 70% of the time, it's your own blood. It took a while, Tommy, but he seemed to enjoy the moment. Yeah, so much fun and, and so relaxed, and you can tell no sense of nervousness, just enjoying this fantastic moment. The 12th Lombardi player to come in, maybe the 13th will be Jerry Kramer.